case, this is a basic lung ultrasound module on technique and normal findings. Um, there are no conflicts of interest to declare. The ultrasound images and videos used uh, in this presentation are courtesy of the Division of Emergency Ultrasound at Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston. Um, this video is going to cover the technique um, of doing lung ultrasound and some of the normal findings you expect to find. Um, so in terms of transducer selection, you know, typically there are a number of transducers to consider. The top left here is the curvilinear um, uh, transducer, often called the abdominal probe, and the top right here is the phased array, or often called the cardiac transducer. This is a microconvex transducer, and this is a linear uh, transducer. So in deciding what transducer to use, the main consideration really is the frequency of your transducer. Um, and all these transducers here are all low-frequency transducers, and this linear transducer is a high-frequency transducer. So if all you're interested in looking at is the plural line um, and the plura, then potentially the high-frequency transducer is quite reasonable to use. However, if you're interested in looking at the parenchyma and beyond, then, then really you should be looking at a low-frequency transducer. Um, for most trainees starting out, we highly recommend using the, the curvilinear or the abdominal probe, primarily because it allows you to image the landmarks and identify your key landmarks a lot easier um, and than the uh, phased array, for instance. Um, and also, this uh, microconvex is not uh, commonly available in a number of institutions. So I think, um, you know, in, for all intents and purposes, you can really use any of the transducers, but um, we highly recommend using the curve linear um, to start. So in doing your lung ultrasound, what you want to do is you want to place your transducer uh, longitudinally and identify the uh, two rib spaces and what you're trying to look at is between the two ribs but you do want to make sure that the actual ribs are in your image and as such a longitudinal image is what you want to generate um, and you want to place the transducer marker towards the patient's head by convention so um, this is what it would look like uh, when you're imaging you can see or you can't really see here is the transducer marker is pointing towards the patient's head you want to place the get a longitudinal view of your uh, lung ultrasound as such as, as shown here. Um, by convention, by um, we there are eight zones that you would uh, interrogate in a patient who is a supine uh, patient. So the zones are divided uh, based on here's the sternal line here, anterior axillary line, and posterior axillary line. So at the top portion of the lung is zone one. Uh, and the bottom is zone 2, and then between the anterior axillary line and posterior axillary line, you have zone 3 at the top and zone 4 at the bottom. And then you have the same images here, zone 5 here, 6 here, and then in the axillary region, 7 and 8. So that's kind of what it will look like um, in terms of transducer placement. You really want to try to get um, at a perpendicular angle to the lung, because um, lung is a kind of a curved structure, and you can see as it curves around, you want to be still perpendicular to it to get the best image possible. So these are the four zones on the right side, and again, um, just this is zone one here, two, three, four, five, six. Six, you know, typically is actually kind of covered by the uh, heart, um, so you, you know you may want to skip that, and then seven and eight over there. So this is what you would get. Um, uh, here's a clip of what it might look like in, as you do your lung ultrasound. So first thing that we you should do is look for the um, the rib shadow. So look at all the black regions that you can't really see very well, um, and those are your rib shadows. Okay. So once you've identified the rib shadows, and trace it back to the very top of the screen, and you should see the cortex um, or the rib margins right over there. And there they are. So then the first echogenic, bright echogenic line, just deep to the uh, rib margins, or the ribs um, uh, cortices, would be the pleural line right there. So that you can identify as pleura. And the reason why it's important to identify the ribs is that this patient's relatively uh, skinny here, but in um, patients with more musculature or uh, fat, potentially, you might see a lot of fascial, linear fascial layers that, that could easily be mistaken. 
um, as the plural line. So it's always important that you find your landmark. So this um, sign here is typically or is commonly known as the bat sign because it kind of looks like the wings of a bat and the body of the bat there. So first obtain your bat sign so that you know where the plural line is. And the second thing you should then look for is that deep to the plural line you see these like echogenic white lines and they're called A lines. And on the other side you can see a number of them over there. So how are these generated and what are they? Um, here's another image where you can see more going down the screen, these horizontal recurrent lines there. So how are they generated? So essentially what you have is a transducer and you have your skin and you've got your pleura. So deep beneath the pleura, assuming the lung is full of air as it should be, air is very reflective uh, for sound waves. So what's going to happen is that the sound waves is going to travel down your transducers like so. It's going to bounce off of the pleura because underneath it is full of air and it's going to arrive at your transducer. Your machine is going to figure out how long it took for that um, uh, emitted sound wave to come back to the transducer. And based on the speed, average speed that it knows sound, um, sound is traveling through the tissues, it places a specific distance and it claims that your pleura is over here. What, because it is so reflective between the skin and the pleura, what sometimes can happen is that you can send a sound wave down to the pleura, come back up, and it gets trapped again down to the pleura and back up to the transducer. So it basically traveled twice before it actually, uh, two times before it actually gets back to the transducer. And because it took twice as long, the machine mistakes it for being having another line twice as far from the skin. And as you can imagine, if this process happened the third time, so here's your sound waves coming up once, twice, and then one more time. So having it arrive like three times, takes three times as long to get there. Again, the machine's going to mistake it for having uh, a plural line three times as far deep to the uh, skin. And that's, that's the why these uh, formation of A lines occur, and this will become important as we do the future uh, later module on B lines. As the pro some of the processes are fairly similar. Okay, so you have your this is a a normal lung ultrasound. You can see the bat sign right there, and you can see an A line, and you can see a number of recurrent A lines. Another feature that you look for in terms of A lines that, that makes you know that they're A lines is the fact that they're equidistant, meaning the distance from the skin to the pleural line is the same as from this to here, it's the same as from here to here. So if you put a ruler uh, side by side, you 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 know they, they're equidistant. And the last feature we're going to go over in a normal lung is the presence of lung sliding. And sometimes you actually have to hone in a little bit, um, decrease the depth to see this a little bit better. Um, but um, as you can see, the, there's a movement um, in the pleura as the patient uh, takes, a, uh, takes a breath in and out. And you can actually see that movement and that's entirely normal. So in summary, the three normal findings that you should look for on lung ultrasound are the following, bat, bat sign, A lines, and lung sliding. And um, these are the expected regions that you, you scan, doesn't mean you have to scan all of them, but uh, they should be labeled as such, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, 8. And for patients who can actually sit up, you should really um, have a look at the posterior region. I mean, one of the things that I teach my trainees is that um, put your transducer on all the areas you would normally listen. So, you know, you should labor those as, um, as appropriate, right posterior, uh, left posterior, uh, etc. And that's the end of the module. Thanks for tuning in.